if I was the owner, I would have let you guys go in there when it was closed down to the public. But like when you guys were jumping around, there was literally like families, little kids watching. It was insane. We did. We did make the day everyone had there. Spectator, What's up, guys? Today's guest is a world-renowned parkour and free-running legend better known as Philly D. Please welcome to the Jamcast, Mr. Phil Doyle. What's up, dude? Good evening, one of all. I appreciate you making this happen, man. I know it's a, it's a little late over near you. It's like 9 p.m. your time. Well, that's fine by me, otherwise. No one sleeps too early in this house anyway. Um, but yeah, sorry it took so long to get on here. All good. A anything for the legend, Phil. Anything for the legend. Cheers. Because obviously we go way back, but I don't think we're allowed to catch up as buddies, right? We've got to talk no. a little bit. We can, but a little bit more poignant on topics of, I guess, the sport and whatever, movement. What you? Are, are, are you still, still out in Cambridge, Cambridge right now, or where are you at right now? No, 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 Bristol. Oh, okay. All right. When did you, when did you make that change? Uh, I moved here last October. End of September, beginning of October. So I've been here a year. I'll be here for three more years. Okay. And what made you move over to Bristol? I know Cambridge was like the old stomping grounds forever, and that's where like half the videos of you are at. Well, I'm, I'm getting educated, so I'm at university. No way. What do you study, bro? Uh, economics. Okay. Okay. Uh, I need to do another research and figure out where I'll, what I'll do afterwards before, before even the end of this year. So I've got two years I'll be placed for stuff. Okay. So there's a lot of research needs to go into it. <laughs> it's crazy to see you all growing up, going to school now, wearing the polo shirt in the interview right now. My, my memories of you flash back all the way to when we first met in, uh, in New Jersey in 2009. Do you remember that trip? Yeah, yeah this was very young. This, I must have been like 16 or 17, maybe 17. Yeah. I don't know, young. Me, you, Pip, Ben, Pip, Danny. Yes. Super crazy. I think, I think, I think Ryan Doyle was there too. Okay. I think I did a couple. There are a couple of tri trips close together. I think maybe one of them Ryan wasn't there, but the other one he was. And we all stayed in that big house in Jersey. Yes. We spent a lot of time in New York. Yes, yes we, we did. did. And then I, I can't remember what we did though. I think we were just out there to train. Yeah, I don't know why we were there. I think, I think part of it was we were training and meeting each other for the first time. And then the other trip that we took, which you may not have been there, was when we were doing the Equinox training sessions. Uh, okay, so maybe that was when Ryan was there. Maybe I wasn't there for that. But I, remember, I remember seeing videos of Ben, but I, I don't think I was there for the gym stuff. That would make a lot of sense, actually. I think Ryan was there for that one. I just remember walking around and uh, doing jumps in Ben's socks. <laughs> At that battery, whatever it's called. Battery Park. Battery Park, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good spot, very famous spot. Yeah, man, that's so crazy. And then I'll, ne I'll never forget, like, shortly after we met, that's when a video of you guys and some of the other guys, like, uh, I wasn't on that trip, but it was you, Danny, Livewire, and King David. You guys went to that roller coaster, uh, that theme park. Oh, yeah, that was, that was a very dangerous day. I was going to ask you about that. Some of those jumps to this day are, I still show that video to people and they're like terrified when they see you guys doing some of those precisions. Yeah. I, 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 part of me does think sometimes if, if it was, if, I don't know. I don't think if Danny wasn't there, I don't think I would have done half of that stuff. There's some kind of camaraderie that's very strong with me and him, especially with scary stuff. Um, <laughs> Also, I don't know how it was possible that they even let us climb on the roller coaster. It's ridiculous. To be really honest with you, I was thinking the well, same I thing. What I'm actually told. I don't want to sound like a pessimist, but I, I mean, on a professional standpoint, I'm not saying that it was likely to fall, but if you own the theme park, you would end up. I mean, we'd probably dodge two of them, depending on the outcome of the injury. Yeah, I would have, if I was the owner, I would have let you guys go in there when it was closed down to the public. But like when you guys were jumping around, there was literally like families, little kids watching. It was insane. We were meant to. It probably did, it probably did make the day everyone had there that spectated it better. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But maybe it was a good ploy. It was like, I've, I've been to events where they've just got random people sort of doing uh, break dancing or like hand balance and stuff like that they've just paid a bit of extra money to get an event 
to make it a bit more interesting. Which is relatively commonly done. <laughs> so we smashed it. Yeah, man. That, that video is so epic. And it's so funny because the next time that we got together was... Uh, back in London in 2010, that was when I made my first trip over to the UK to meet up with you and Ben. And I remember going with you guys, you guys were the first ones that took me to IMAX, South Bank, all the spots. And I was literally like, dude, the height training over here is a different level than the United States. Like we are pussies compared to you guys. Yeah, but I think it's partly, it's partly because America is so big that, and all the buildings are quite new also. And the Arctic is very difficult. I feel like in America, you don't get these medium height roofs. If you see what I mean, like three, four stories high. It's either like nothing or it's massive. So maybe I'm wrong. That's just, that's the kind of architectural place we train in London. None of it's like sort of, because some of the stuff we did in America, um, I think in New York, I remember me and Danny were jumping on the edge of like a 15 story building at one point, mm -hmm. which is just ludicrous. And you wouldn't have access to one. There's, no. Danny did a back tuck on a wall this wide with like a 15 story drop to New York yellow taxis. Yep. I know exactly which clip you're talking about. It, it is kind of funny. I guess we'll take that as an excuse of why we are, aren't as good at height training. But it's something that always stuck out on my mind. Even when they did like the first season of Ultimate Parkour Challenge. Uh, and this isn't to like talk down upon any of the guys. But I remember distinctly like on the pilot, like Danny Arroyo wasn't as comfortable on some of the eye beams and heights like all the European guys just running around, you know. And then it took him until actual season one when we shot the whole series that he was like okay now i can play around with you guys i feel a little more comfortable at these heights you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Fair i mean you need to practice at height to be good at it because it, it just takes a bit of experience just a, a bit of experiencing the realization that you don't fall off is basically what you need and a lot of it because yeah. you're perfectly happy walking unless it's incredibly windy which it often isn't you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You just get comfortable standing on the edge and realizing you haven't fallen and you're not going to. Um, so that's what you need to do. Experience that a lot. Like I'm, I'm scared of heights now. I don't. I'm not doing any of that stuff now. I was just going to ask you that if you've gotten more comfortable over the years, or if you've just kind of been like, oh, that's in my past. I've got it on video. I'm done with that. It depends on what it is. I mean, I think because I, I still jump a lot, but I don't do as much climbing, so. With descents and things, like I'm not that confident going high up because I don't trust holding on to something as much as I used to. Wow. But standing on something and jumping to something else, running or static, I think that's not so bad. As long as you're going to make it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's an important part. I think and if, if, it kind of, it's an, if, it, if it's an exciting challenge that I want to do, then that changes everything because then you become confident because you kind of have to, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. 100. I think, I think one, one of the, the coolest things. Like, like, okay, I actually want to do this. It's kind of exciting. It's, it's, it's interesting. So therefore, like, no more messing around, full focus, switch on, and then it gets done. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the... One of the coolest things lately is like we've been getting the chance to see you training with like, you know, in some of the store videos and out there training it like, you know, with a lot of the guys are, you know, for lack of a better term, modern day guys that everyone watches. How do you feel out there? Do you feel like like, you know, do you feel like the old dude, like the old gen guy out there with them or like it, like what's it like training with these guys? Because I feel crazy training with the young kids out here like Bailey and stuff. Yeah, I think I, I don't know. Their, their spatial awareness is so much better. And there's a lot more sort of rotating, spinning, flips to precisions. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to get on board. I don't spend a lot of time doing them. Um, but yeah, that sort of element to it. And also they got some stamina. They do, they do lots of sort of long lines mixing in different things. I'd do half of it and see that. Like, like I'm, I might combine two strides and an arm jump. I love doing that, but then I'm, that's it. I'm done. I'm not, I don't, I'm not gonna like climb up and then do something over here and then plus the double cork at the end of it. Oh, yeah. no endurance. I see some I've of these. always separated parkour and gymnastics and tricking and things. Most of my training, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah 100, 100, 100. So I don't very often implement flips into parkour. I'm trying to a little bit now, but I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't excite me. I do like doing a little speed step to cork or kick the moon. That's kind of cool. And very simple, by the way. <laughs> I know, bro. I see some of these lines that Ed Scott throws down, and I'm like, 
first of all, how does this guy make these jumps? Like, not to diss him by any means, but he looks considerably smaller than a lot of the other guys, like, compared to, like, a column, you know. He, is, he, is, he isn't that tall, but um, he's very, I mean, very talented for one, and very ambitious, the guy person he is. He's, he's, he's up training before we all meet him to train, if that makes sense. He's doing, he'll go for a run or a long cycle or do some weight training. Like, he, he actually is an athlete. Like, I, I often have a go at powerful people that don't like football because fair enough to be upset about the amount of money that's involved. Okay, cool, I get it. I'm still, I still enjoy watching football and I respect the athleticism because I mean, I, I exaggerate in Belich and I say that every single footballer, for example, in the Premier League, not being biased because I'm in England, but it is one of, the, one of the best leagues in the world. Every single one of those footballers is better than Ed Scott as far as being an athlete's concerned. I'm sorry, they have a lot of money, they have like dietitians, um, or nutritionists, I don't know which word's better, um, they train very hard together. If they're injured, they've got like some of the best physios in the world to sort of sort them out and get them back to full health. Like they train very hard like athletes, and not many powerful people do. Whereas I think your Tim Champions and your Ed Scotts, they actually they do. They, they dedicate a lot of their time. I go out and do jumps, and sometimes we call it interesting. I, I'm not like, I'm not lifting weights to try and make myself better. Do you see what I mean? I do, I do, I do, I do see what you mean. And you know what's kind of funny about that? There's an old video of you online, uh, the art documentary back in 2006. And part of your interview, you say something like, um, "Like I'm just getting into parkour," and you talk about how it's all it's important to work on silent landings and conditioning and things like that. Um, okay, silent landings, yes, definitely. <laughs> and I, I, I actually, I actually do do. I run and try and stay fit. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of embellishing that I don't train as hard as I maybe do, but I haven't really gone into lifting weights and things like that, and I don't have the endurance. I can't train a whole day and then train the next day, as Ed can, and that's because he constantly does, because he has no day off. He's a monster. Yeah, things are way different. I remember back in the day when I was younger, I would trick in the mornings, go eat, and then I would go trick at nights. Now, if I trick, I need to go see the chiropractor the next day and take like two, three days off. <laughs> <laughs> how's, um, how's Ben? Is Ben, is ben training? Is he working? Ben is working as usual, but this summer, I would say during the quarantine, we've been able to like pull him out a little more than usual because a, a good friend of ours, Bailey Payne, who I know started following you. I, I, I told him he better get on game and start following all the OGs like yourself. But he's been making... He's been making all of us go outside and train because he's so like enamored with parkour. You know, every he's he's the type of guy right now where he walks by and he's like, "Look at that! Look at that! Look at that!" And we're like, "Yeah, yeah, we we used to be like that." So he's been pulling us out a little more. He's a very famous tricker, right? Yeah, he's good. Yeah, I think I think he's a big fan of parkour. Dude, I, I keep telling him this right now. As far as trickers making the conversion to parkour athletes, I think he's the best, bro. Because like right now, you know, for example, he's he can do quad full on both sides. He can triple cork, full and back out. But if you watch all of his videos right now, he's not focused on flipping even in his parkour lines. He's just strictly working on K to P's, you know, precisions. He can quad full on both sides. On flat. He is quad full on the left and to the right on spring floor. From round off? Or mm -hmm. Not really. From round off. No, no. Does he does he do a uh, flip a back handspring or no? That I don't remember. He may have, but it's kind of crazy. He used to he used to trick predominantly to twisting to his right, and one day at a gathering, he got lost on a trick and decided from that day on to switch to his left. And now he's like has the world record for corkscrews twisting to the left. It's 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 insane how his mind and body works. He could twist that way. No. I can do like single tricks, like I can do like butterfly twist, cork, and gainer on both sides, but I can't do doubles and triples. That's insanity. Yeah, I mean, that's still like, I don't think I could do a 180 the other way. You know, could you? I, I to the left, although I round up to my right, which actually unfortunately means that my, my double twist and floor is always I can't see. Yeah, that's the traditional gymnastics way. A lot of people leave the ground like this. I have to set up and then spin. Yeah, like like traditional traditional gymnastics, you're supposed to round off right and then twist left because it squares your body off. Oh really? Yeah, that's what a lot of my friends have said. Yeah. And then I try I try and do a lot of I like I like a flick in there. <laughs> I respect it a lot more. I don't know why. I, I think it's it's it one. It looks so much nicer. <sighs> 
and like you, you, you go straight up out of it. See, yeah. I. I hate back handsprings, dog. I would much rather just do round off or cartwheel and go. I hate like going towards the ground. The only move I like like that's touchdown raise, but still. Okay, that's not something I think I can I can see so you might be happy to work. I can gumby just about. But I haven't progressed onto any touchdown raise. And I can't swing to it. I can really like I can do it to two feet and then like back somersault. But. And I I think because my shoulder flexibility is not great, you've got to still have your hands quite far behind. And your body's like this, arc. Oh yeah, yeah. Put yep. arc the wrong way, just so it clear. After I had shoulder surgery, that was the one move that took me forever to regain because of the flexibility, you know. Gumby. No, uh, touchdown raise. Okay, I still don't really know how you approach it, even. <laughs> I'll think one day. I'll try and figure it out. I like it because it's fun and it's it's a great warm up for park floor. Totally. It's like you're stretching quite a bit and um, you're using your ankles a lot. You're obviously better on some of the hard grass. Um, yeah, so that's good. In the summer, we did a lot of that, just sort of a bit of tricking to warm up and then get into doing some jumps and things like that. Mm. And then for a short time, we actually went and worked out our upper body and things like that afterwards. But that all seemed to disappear once lockdown started, started, started beginning to cool down, cool off. And places started opening. Yeah, more when we when there was nothing to do, I was conditioning like crazy. I think that's one of the things that's going to make Bailey a monster, though. Is every morning he wakes up and he conditions hard for like an hour, an hour or more every morning. Every body part switching off per day. He works with a personal trainer, so he is super, super well conditioned and in shape. Okay, yeah, that's good. I think that's that's what most martial artists used to do back in the day. If you if you can have like a yeah like a half an hour or an hour workout that you can do every morning and none of your body aches as a result of it, then you're like in some tip top shape right there. Mm -hmm. And like obviously base it how you want on what you want to be, what areas you need strength for what you're practicing. Like I guess if a powerful person was doing it, it would be like lots of I don't know lunges, jumps, skipping, running. I have sadly, so I hate running, but it's really, really good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I've only discovered this recently. It's very, very good for you. So I run, even though I hate it. I try and run as often as I can. Not like I think for a parkour athlete or a tricker or like maybe someone more like Ed Scott, who's like very endurance based. Like he is very powerful, but I think he focuses less on his power. Like he's not doing trying to be able to jump as far as he can, things like that. Um, maybe he like is fine running, but I, I think people like us, should, we shouldn't be running like marathons or anything like that. Because then I think the, our muscle fibers can't have, a, we can't find balance to be able to jump really far and run marathons, you see what I mean? Yeah. But like five, three to five to eight to 10 K, that kind of thing regularly, not doing it that fast. I think that's it's, it's unbelievably good for you. Yeah, totally. It's funny because I see guys now like, uh, you know, Pasha has his daily runs where he's inspiring the community to go on a couple mile runs per day. And it's funny because like I grew up as a park as a as a track athlete, like I started running full time when I was nine years old. And so like, dude, there was weeks where we would run, you know, 13 miles one day, 10 miles the next day, you know, 10 miles a day after that. But it was crazy because like my metabolism was so fast. I couldn't gain weight. I couldn't put on muscles. Like all my muscles just got really long and stringy and not explosive, you know, as a result of it. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think frequent sort of 3K even mm -hmm. would be better. And then, yeah, maybe like run, run 3K and then do some skipping, do some upper body conditioning, all of it. I think if you're going to do what Bailey's doing, obviously I'm far from an expert, but if you're doing what Bailey's doing, I think it needs to be, none of it should be that intense. It should all be fast and like lots of reps and then like mix it up sort of thing. Because you don't want to be achy for when you actually train. Totally. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to condition my legs too much that the next day I can't jump far. That's kind of upset. It needs to be like just at the precipice of where it starts really tearing your muscle fibers. Because I'd rather tear my muscle fibers doing awesome jumps as opposed to that. Maybe I'll consider lifting weights. I just don't believe in it. 
even though, no, okay, no, no. So I do believe in it. I know it's true. But maybe part of me sort of doubts that because I can still jump fairly far. I know, you can. I was going to say, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? Like, And I, if I've never looked like, does that mean that if I start lifting weights properly and I do it obviously with good form and the right way, am I just going to suddenly jump way further? I probably will. I'm going to try it. I should try it, I think. But while running, because also the problem is I'm, I'm heavy. Most people I know and sort of a lot of the ones that I'm not jealous of, but I respect a lot how able they are, they all weigh 20 kilos less than me. Mm -hmm. The part, part of me is like, well, if I just, I mean, I don't know how I'd lose 20 kilos, but I think I'm, I'm unhealthily overweight. I'm most, mostly bone and muscle, a little bit of fat. Yeah, muscle weighs, muscle weighs more than fat anyways, you know? Hmm. So maybe, maybe you're just, you know, your legs are gigantic, bro. That's one thing I'll never forget. You, you have monster legs. Yeah, but that's not, that's not a good thing. Apparently <laughs> you know, I, can't, I can't just, I can't just, I can't just go. I'm quite a slow runner as well. But if I worked on my acceleration and lost it away, I think I could definitely jump quite a lot further. Um, it's a lot of effort though. Running, maybe train sprints, and just maybe only do Bulgarian split squats. I'm interested, bro. I, I really want to see what happens if you start conditioning all of a sudden. What if you just unlock like these more ridiculous strides than you've ever been able to do? Yeah, but how, like you've also got to take into account that there needs to be a balance of technique and confidence with the sort of strength that you have. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so I would have to be able to control it all. So I think. One of the things that I'm good at, but I think the main thing that I'm quite good at in parkour is because of, I guess, a lot of accuracy in my feet and also I'm quite light on my feet. I'm very, what I'm good at is controlling momentum. I have terrible acceleration, not that good power, but I, I can run fast at a big jump to a railing and still sort of land without hurting myself or stride something like, I'm good at manipulating momentum and controlling it. That's that's my to the ten. I think. I would agree. I would agree with you, Doug. I'll I'll never forget the first time uh, Ben made me study your rail precision technique and the way that sometimes you'd absorb or sometimes you do this little filly D bounce, and I'm like, how in the hell is he doing this on a rail? <laughs> I mean, that that is that is probably not the way to do it. That is me kind of trying to make it look as easy as possible. I think. Really hard to bounce and then actually stay on the rail there. Yeah, 100%, dude. You do. But I think a lot of that's posture as well, and then having maybe your muscles being strong enough to take the impact of the landing with control, but without bending very much. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people these days, they lean over their feet in order to stick the landing, because I like to be like a bit like a panel. Like, I think... A good landing, you should sort of, none of your body should go past your toes. Mm -hmm. Really? That makes sense. But I'm, I might not be right about that. That's just what I've decided in my head. I think one of the... I think one of the biggest things you have to your advantage, though, is just, you know, n and not to make you f seem or feel old, is you've been doing this for so many years. Like, you've been doing parkour, if I'm not mistaken, since what, like 2005? Maybe around then? Yeah, exactly. 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. And there's some kids in the game now that, like, I watch that are 16 years old. And it's like, you've been training since they were one years old. And, like, you know, there's something to be said about the amount of experience. Also, they're, they're pretty good. And they've got that. There is, a, and I, I don't like admitting it, but there is sort of a, a bravery to being young. Yes. Oh, totally. You don't know the consequences. I, I won't try and attempt to go into why that is. But, like, I don't know if you don't really care. Um... You also, the less injuries you've had, the less worried you are about hurting yourself. I mean, the more times you hit your shin and it's quite severe or your knee, the more, it's just sort of human psychology, the more you're going to be a bit worried about it, which makes you less confident to do certain things. And then once you've had like big falls, then that's not ideal. And I, th I do think as you get older, you start to enjoy and appreciate life more. Mm -hmm. So you kind of don't want to be like being ill or being injured is really quite rubbish. It takes away a lot of your freedom. Tell me about it, bro. I'm recovering from a, a MCL injury right now, and I've had double knee surgery, shoulder surgery, and it's like, I, honestly, for me to go out and be inspired to train, it really takes a lot at this point. Like, I, I just want to do stuff within my own 
comfort zone. I'm not so much obsessed with like trying to push the boundaries anymore. You know, I'm just more so doing it to like feel good and do it for myself as opposed to like, okay, I want to mentally break this barrier today. You know? Yeah. No, no, I get you. I get you. I think I do want to push some boundaries, but only in the relatively near future. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, I need, I need to go. I, 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 I do like, yeah, I, I like to go and play tennis, um, and various other sports sort of getting into my old age, yeah. which kind of means this whole jumping down and far and then plyometrically reacting and going again is, is, is a lot on the hips and the knees and the lower back and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, we, we've had some sessions with... Three more years. Maybe not even three more years. Like training hard, I reckon. Yeah. Obviously, I'll still do it. I'll do ground level stuff and like mess around, uh, practice tricking, practice, practice gymnastics. But I just mean like really sending some stuff that really inspires me is only going to last. Or lots of impact. Maybe I'll get more technical and do lots of sort of weird window TikTok. I don't know. I can't explain it. You know what I mean? I do. I do, bro. Because I'm a few years older than you. So I feel like I'm already at that point right now where I'm like, uh. What do I want to do at this point now? You know, I have different interests in mind, you know. Hmm. Maybe I'll take up more understanding because chicken's obviously a lot more... Even, even though I'm, I, I'm all right, I could do a few flips, I'm still really not very comfortable being upside down. If that makes any sense. Don't yeah. like being upside down. Don't like jumping into water, I learned recently. <laughs> I'm a math coward at cliff jumping, honestly. If I went on like Stora's clips, they would they just laugh. Why are you even here, Phil? <laughs> a, 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 friend, a friend of mine reckons I'd rather, a friend of mine thinks I'd jump from higher to grass than I would to water. Really? I mean, it's probably not true, but it's, it's just funny that that's, that it's not 100% the water would be the higher thing. I don't like it. It's all good. It's, I think that's good for kids out here to hear, though, is that like even someone like yourself has certain limits or, you know, for lack of a better term, things that are not as comfortable with. You know, we're all human. So, you know, it makes sense. Go, human, exactly. I think it's the, it's the whole going underwater quite deep. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm scared that I'm not going to make it back out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also, again, one of these things about being, so I'm 28 now. It was funny because... I was only slightly upset that I wasn't upset that I couldn't do it. Because I knew the 18 year old me would have been like, no, 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 I'm definitely jumping off this cliff. There's no way I'm walking away without jumping. But I was like, man, I don't even care. Who needs to jump off cliffs? I'm not bothered. My life's good. I don't jump. Maybe if I traveled further to the cliff, I might have felt obliged. But I really couldn't. I looked down, I was like, oh my God. It was, so it was hilarious. I'd been chilling all day and everyone else was jumping off. And they were like, Phil, are you going to go? I was like, yeah, yeah, cool. And I just got up, confidently walked all the way around to the top. And the whole way, I thought I was going to do it. I thought it would be no trouble. And then I got to sort of the edge of this rock, looked down, and was like, nah, no, no chance. There is absolutely no way. Like, a thousand pounds, two thousand, an ice cream, no. Offer me anything, I won't do it. I just, I couldn't have left that rock. That is so funny, Doug. I can't even imagine that. Just, just think, knowing the things that I've seen you do at height, and then s thinking that you're afraid of that is just, it's just funny. You know, obviously it makes sense, but yeah, it's just funny to me. Yeah. So apparently, clearly, I'd rather jump eight feet to another rock that's a bit sketchy with the same drop <laughs> to come to or something. Oh. Apparently, I'd rather do that, but I don't like it. Maybe I don't, I don't trust my form going in. I've also never ever done it. Mm. So that could be a very foreign thing. I think I've jumped off maybe five meters before, but nothing higher. Ben was always very good at stuff like that. Yeah, always. He was good. In yeah. fact, he always loved the pool. Most of our time spent together in that LA or anywhere was always. This, he loves a little swim and sit in the pool. He does. He does love the water. I'll give him that. That's so funny. Can you still? It's because he's, he's he's got very like. He's all limbs and no torso. <laughs> that That's why he can front flip so easy. That, that probably, yeah, that probably makes for a very good swimmer, right? Yes. <laughs> Do so much, manipulate the water so well. 
thing. You know what he's into now, though. There, there's been there was. I'll never forget. There was a day that we uh, we went out and trained, and then we called him the next day and we're like, "Yo, you want to come train with us again?" He's like, "No, bro. I can barely move today. I gotta go play golf." <laughs> His new thing is golf. That's all he cares about. He golfs nonstop, multiple times a week. Fair enough. Is, is he quite competent? Have you played with him? I don't play, but I mean, it's just Ben, you know, anything that he puts his mind to, he becomes super good at. So, of course, he's good. Yeah, he's a very focused individual, isn't he? Um, but he also, he likes to mix it all up. I think he's quite good. I'm still trying to work out what my old man hobby's going to be. It's not going to be gold. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Um, I like the idea of playing tennis, but that's more sport, less hobby. Mm-hmm. But, um... I don't know. I also like the idea of getting into snooker. Into what? Do you know what snooker is? No. So you know Paul? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It's a game on a much bigger table. It's a lot harder. It requires a lot of concentration. I just find it quite fascinating how it's it's very much about how you... So you've got a white ball and then a triangle of red balls and then some various, various colored balls. You have to use the white ball to put a red ball to sort of make it in place so that you can pop one of the coloured balls. Mm. And then you go back to red and then colour and you... Once all the reds are gone, you pop all of the coloured... different other coloured balls in an order which I can't be bothered to explain right now. Um, and then whoever's got the most points wins. It's very complicated and it's really impressive the skill of sort of putting top spin or side spin or something on the white ball so that it can pop the red and then position into a good place for one of the higher pointed mm-hmm. colored balls, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's crazy, Doug. Actually very cool to watch. Just, okay. I mean, not that I do very often, but it's very interesting, very impressive to watch the people at the top of their game. But maybe I'll get into snooker. Seems pretty low impact. Your classic heights. Maybe rock climbing, but I never, I don't know, rock climbing I enjoy, but I never get that excited by it. Yes. If that makes sense. Like, I'm happy to do it for an hour or two, but I couldn't, I couldn't go climbing constantly. Although maybe if you, like, spend a little time around different climbing problems and eventually you could get to, you get a third of the way, then two thirds, and then a week later you manage it all, that's going to be quite exciting. But we can't do it all, Travis, so I'm just going to jump still. <laughs> That's so funny, man. And so, yo, taking it back to like you starting in 2005, what got you into parkour in the first place? Like what was your first like experience with it and what made you decide that like that's what you were going to stick with for the past 15 years, you know? Um, well, my mom wanted me to play piano. Well, I was, I mean, that's not an important part of it, but um, I think there was a tiny bit of sort of Oh, I don't want to do what my parents want me to do. I want to do my own thing and then found my own thing. I was obviously quite into parkour as well. Um, and uh, I saw someone just doing flips on a beach in France. Oh. And then me and a friend I was with who I'd met on holiday, we spoke to him and he was quite passionate about the sport and teaching it and things. So he taught us some bolts. I tried to teach my older sister and she stacked it. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> but um, maybe the reason she's not into it now, I don't know. But... Um, that was quite funny. I mean, I'm sure we all stacked it multiple times at some point. And then he, he happened to have friends in Cambridge that did it, so he got me in contact with them. And they were very good. Uh, I think they hated me at first. I was just this young and young kid. And I, I always wanted to go training. Even though I could barely doing I could, I could barely get over a wall about two feet tall. But I still always wanted to go and keep practicing. And yeah, got quite excited by it. Met Danny quite early, spent a lot of time in Liverpool. Around. I don't know, it's just one of those things I enjoyed very much when I spent a lot of time doing. I was but again, it was all practice, there was no... Maybe we, we, I think we did... I remember this, it sounds embarrassing now, but we 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 played ladder press-ups on MSN. You know MSN Messenger? Yeah, yeah. Imagine just, imagine just like a group chat of like four people from different parts of the UK that we were friends and we like training together and just someone typed in one. <laughs> And then one, 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 and two. No. <laughs> we're all doing one, and then two, and then three, and then until we're dead. That's and then, funny. And how how much time were you putting into training back then? In those like early years, were you training every day, all day? Like obviously, with the exception of the weather where you guys live, which is horribly ridiculous. 
I think, I think, yeah, I think it was probably annoyingly. I couldn't tell you, but I think, yeah, maybe probably not like six, but maybe like four, four days a week, all day, okay. most of the time, and also a lot of travelling for weekends, where you train sort of Saturday and Sunday, like a little even longer. I think sometimes we'd meet friends at Cambridge train station at about nine o'clock in the morning and then we'd train till 10 o'clock at night. It was ridiculous. And then we'd, we'd like, we'd all go back to one person's house, have some food, go to sleep, and then the same thing would happen the next day. And we were destroyed. That is crazy. I think, I think what's interesting to me though is that like you started in 2005 and around like for me like you know because we're old school like for me like the golden age when you all of a sudden were killing it was around like 2008 2009 which is only like three four years later that's when you know you have like bit of cambridge steez london baby blitz dem five you know like take my strong hand all those videos came out in like 09 which is literally only like you know a few no, years surely they were, were they not no bro 2010. bro trust me 2009 yeah 2009 for most of those videos the only one that was like 2010 was when I came and saw you in London for the first time and like all those videos had already come out and I'd watched before I got there. Okay. Yeah, I think I think 2010 was long hair. Yes. And then 2011 or was I don't know, Concrete Circus. Mhm. Mm but yeah, it's pretty it's pretty crazy to see that. That level up in 4 years is pretty pretty crazy cuz those were like some of the biggest videos back in our time, you know, for like the old school guys was like all yeah. those. Nothing was as big as some of the stuff happening now, I don't think. I don't think people doing now is actually pretty massive. Me too. And then the, the technical scale of sort of implementing double twists into like on concrete at height with another eight moves already before or after is quite ridiculous. Um, but the beauty of it is that still that everyone trains different ways. <laughs> So it's always exciting seeing different people in different walks of parkour do their own style of thing. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I, I do think a lot of the new school stuff is pretty crazy. Like some of the stuff that Storer does or like, you know, some of the jumps Callum does are absolutely out of this world. Um, especially like, you know, the height that he's doing him at and stuff. But I think what's like, what's kind of crazy is like, like you mentioned a second ago, uh, you know, Professor Longhair Big Chief from 2010. That video still holds up pretty well today, you know, 10 years later. Yeah, I think it's maybe the speed of most of this stuff. I'm not sure. And, and a lot of it's high up as well. Mm -hmm. High up, technical, and still done quite far, or relatively high up. I don't know. I, I do think the song helped massively as well. Totally. Art song shows. Um, and it's the memory. I don't know if it's that good of a video at the moment. I think there's like one flip in it. I think so. Like a side flip, maybe. No, I, I think it's actually me. It's me doing a really bad front 540. Into the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I don't even think I planned it properly. And then like Kai jumps down and wrestles me. <laughs> maybe he does a side flip. I think Kai does a side flip off the trash can. Yeah, 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 exactly. After quite a big running free. Yeah. So that, yeah, that, I think they're the only two. Wow. Lots of climbing, lots of cool, like, I want to call it Jackie Chan type stuff. Mm -hmm. where you like, go up one thing, then there, then there. He was always the king of doing that. Um, yeah, but I think part of it's the nostalgia that gives it all the credit. Everyone remembers that video. I got two questions. Did you guys go into that with the intention of filming a sampler? Because obviously it's a mass like 5 million views at this point. And then secondly, who came up with the title of it? Oh, the title would have been me or me and Kai. Okay. But so so that, you know, the, t the title is the name of the artist of the song. Yes. So the song is Professor Long No, the song is Big Chief by Professor Longhair. And I guess, I don't know. I don't know if it was intentional, but I think... Kai was Professor Longhair and I was the big chief. <laughs> was the idea one of the ideas behind it. Totally. And then we also did very well with the the cat to arm jump at the end where I get stuck. Yes. Because I didn't actually get stuck, it was all planned. Um, and I, I also annoyingly I did it really badly the first time, so I actually had to drop and then do it again. But the one in the video is actually the second attempt. Yeah, I remember asking you if you 180 back and you said nope, you just took the drop straight to the ground. 
No, well, the, the 180 back, it's, it's massive. And there are wires, ledges. The, the top of the wall actually comes out about this much. So there's nothing nice about it. The drop is the safest thing. I mean, maybe if you really wanted to be careful, you could try and get someone to somehow open the window from inside. How big is that drop that you took, though? Ooh, I have no idea. Maybe. I don't think it's the biggest drop I've taken. Okay. Definitely not the biggest drop Dom's taken. Um, I couldn't tell you. Four? I want to say four meters, maybe. From your feet? From my hands. Okay. So that's, that's not that high. Okay. In fact, there will be more. It must be more. It, it looks like four meters from your feet, maybe, you know? Ooh, maybe. Let me, let me, I want to actually just put you to pull it. Oh, you get to pull it up and look? Oh, yes, please do. I, I want to get an answer on this. It's something I've always wanted to know. Uh, I'm looking at something else for weapons. Well, okay, maybe it is. It, it could actually be four for my feet. Yeah, it looks high, man. It, it definitely looks pretty high. Maybe it's like six. I'm just looking at my door. Like, if I reach, if I reach up all the way, I get above the door, and the door is two meters. So, yeah, the windowsill maybe. I mean, we're, we're guessing here, but I reckon the windowsill is six, so just under four to the floor. Okay. Which isn't that bad, right? I mean, I wouldn't want to do it repeatedly. Yeah, but then I'm thinking the weird thing is, like, I've jumped from five into water and I don't like doing that. <laughs> that's what I've said, it's so funny. <laughs> but that's from feet. It's a bit different. Oh, it's so funny. Catch all the way down. Yeah, mental. I'm, I'll measure it. In fact, as an American who asked me to measure some jumps in the UK, mm. uh, I haven't gone around for any of it. But I think he, his argument, he actually thinks that astonishingly sort of half more athletes have excelled in areas where he doesn't think should be as possible athletically hmm. without the proper training. I get what you're saying. It's an interesting, not a phenomenon, way, but um, maybe it's because of the inspiration of actually problem solving ourselves. I don't really know. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. And you know, along the lines of like funny titles, you've always had very interesting names of like a What's the matter, Zohan? You have not touched touched your Baba Ganoush was the title of your video. And it used to be so hard to find these videos of you. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not very tactical, not very wise. Yeah. But I was really trying to promote myself, you see what I mean? Yeah. If anything, I was trying to do the opposite at, one, at a long stage of my life. Um, but that, that, so that video title is from a film. Have you seen the film? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, cool, cool. Because we, we quite like that film. So it's just this ridiculous idea of this superhuman guy who actually just wants to settle down in New York and become a hairdresser, right? Is that the dream? Yeah, yeah. I'm told they actually based it on a real person and he got really, really pissed off. <laughs> with himself. No way. That's funny. Yeah, I remember uh, Paul... I don't know. Maybe 28-year-old me... I don't know if I'd find it as funny now, but I'd find it hilarious back then yeah, as a sort of young teenager. And they had some parkour in it. Paul Darnell from Tempest did a little parkour run for him as a double. Yeah, yeah. Is he is he still training? Still active? Yeah, I, he's got a family now. He's got multiple kids, so he's more focused on raising his family at this point. But yeah, he still puts out little videos of himself, like training in the backyard. He's got like a cool setup with like a his own little backyard parkour place with an air trick and stuff. So. How many kids? Because Gabe, Gabe's got kids. What do you have little kids for this, Travis? Gabe's got one. I think Paul has three. I don't want to be wrong about that. I'm sorry, Diddy, if I'm wrong, but it's all right. yeah, it's crazy to see everyone growing up, man. And yourself? I mean, are we around the world or just in America? There, oh dear. <laughs> oh man. Interesting response. And so, yo, one of the other videos that obviously had a really funny name that I think is like a cult classic um, is "Barefoot Dem Foolish Blaps." 2007. I don't know why that where that name came from. Always, the barefoot makes sense. Of course. Uh, and then the rest is probably like a stupid childish attempt at using London slang. Um, but no one would have said that. It was so long ago that maybe people did say 
அதுக்கு சிக்ஸ்டி வைக்க முடியும் சார் அது இன் ஜெனரல் In general though what made you make a barefoot sampler cuz even to this day like that's one thing that stands out because it's not even seen that often now like for example uh most recently the guy 3 run Koval uh who he won the last Tempest challenge last month he just entered this month and his big thing was that he did a barefoot run for this this year's this month's challenge you have a whole sampler of doing parkour missions barefoot you know what made you do that and put it on film uh i think it was all, it was always not always but So the whole idea of doing something better is you, you haven't got the option of doing it well, which you do in trainers. You, you have to do it well, yeah. but it's going to be very painful. And I was never the sort of person who was good at putting myself through pain. So I didn't just sort of do jumps and climbs and things and just hurt my feet and be like, yeah, okay, I'm just hard. I actually did focus very much on not ever hurting my feet. And the plan at the moment is to do a full length sock video. But actually quite tough to do that. Wearing your socks or Ben's? <laughs> well, I haven't really Ben's socks. No, I've got, I've got, the store has given me some socks and they said that whenever I need new ones, just to get some new ones. So it could be in theirs. Um, but I don't know, I don't have the idea of it that much because some of the stuff I would like to do, if I do mess it up, my ankle is very likely going to be broken. So, or if, or if at any point I fall, Not that, not that a lot of it will be high up, but say if one of the things I want to do, I end up falling and taking a big drop in stocks. Now that, that is really going, like you can bruise your feet badly in nice thick trainers. So, I don't know, <clears throat> I'm thinking about it. I might, because yeah, the thing, obviously it has to be amazing. Forgive me for saying that. It has to be a good video. Otherwise it's not really worth doing it, releasing it. Of course. So I need a lot of thought, a lot of focus. I will probably have to train for that because I need to be in tip-top condition. Yeah, 100. And is that so? Don't hold your breath. Would you team up with Scott to film that or how would you do that on your own? Uh, I mean, the, the annoying thing about teaming up with anyone is because I'd love to team up with Scott to do it, but that means that he needs to, because we live in different cities, that means that he needs to be there the whole time. Yeah, true. Videos like that, for example, videos with long hair, you get one good clip a day. If if you get a good clip, do you see what I mean? Because it's quite hard, it takes a lot of attempts sometimes, you might have to come back a different day. Um, but if you're trying to film a video where everything's sort of top tier of your ability, I think, yeah, sometimes it's one clip a day, which means a lot of days. And I'm like, he's got other stuff to do, I've got stuff, other stuff to do. So I've got my own camera now. I think just whoever's there will film it. Okay. And they will film it well, I promise. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> and now of all the videos that you've been in or, you know, the challenges that you've done, is there one that sticks out in your mind that you're most proud of or one that is like the most memorable challenge or jump that you've done? I don't know. I think most memorable video maybe would be Concrete Circus. I think I'm very proud of a lot of the things I did in that. Okay. And I'm still trying to work out if a lot of the things I did in that I could do today. Not sure. Definitely not the cat pass stuff. My cat pass has really lost its uh, confidence and speed. I'm trying to bring it back. Um, maybe the running jumps I would disguise. I'm not too sure. most memorable challenge of all time do you know what actually might be did you did you when you were in miami with us no i didn't get to go to miami that time you know when we did so we did that um abandoned stadium video yes i did just because it was sort of even though it wasn't that complicated if i fucked it up it would have been really really forgive my language it would have been really horrible um But I can't remember whether it was that big or not. It was, it was like a stride. It, it wasn't that high up, but beneath the first stride and then the second bit, or the, it's like two stages. Yeah. Um, beneath the stride and then beneath the end landing was like sort of like water and rocks, like quite big rocks. Which obviously, if you can't see the rocks when you're traveling at speed, it's not going to be nice for your ankle, shins. And I was in shorts as well. Um, but I just did a stride and then So you couldn't work up, up to it at all. There was like a ledge maybe 
I don't know how thick it was. Like that, like a little bit smaller than your shoe, that went all the way along. So stride with the right foot, stride that ledge, and then sort of arm jump a railing at the end. But under, there was like five railings and then a ledge, and then under the ledge was this not that big but drop. So you could have like, if my feet missed the bottom bit, I would have ended up just like sliding out onto my back on these wet rocks. Oh, yeah. Not very hard. That maybe is memorable. Wow. I don't know. I don't pick favorites, Travis. <laughs> 15 years in the game, you've got too many challenges, I'm sure, to pick at this point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of unfinished ones as well. A lot that I've tried and just never did, sadly. But there's always more. If I lose weight, then I can really do most of them. Maybe that conditioning, baby. Start lifting those weights. Like, I'm going to lose muscle. I don't think it's physically possible to lose. But maybe I just need, like, weaker. Some part of my body needs to be weaker. Yes. yes. Slightly. Oh, that's um, Because fats kind of help, some fats healthy as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 it's yeah. definitely needed so it doesn't start eating away at your muscle. If you have no fat, your body will start eating away at your muscles and everything else, you know? Yeah, so there's, there's like a very thin line, I think. Bruce Lee died way too easily as well, didn't he? Yeah, totally. Uh, and I watch all these... I watch all these shows like, have you ever heard of the show called Alone where people go out and they live in the wilderness like with literally nothing, they have to hunt, kill, do everything. They, the people always that win the show are the ones that are able to get the most fat in their bodies, you know? Because even if you catch like a rabbit, it doesn't have that much fat comparative to like if you catch like a fish, like a trout, you know what I'm saying? Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because fat's kind of lasting energy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think. It's broken down. You know what's funny though? It's not, it's not a memorable mission, but you know one thing that I will never forget because I never thought I would ever see it happen was you competing at a Red Bull Art Emotion. I never thought that would happen. <laughs> you competed at two. I know. I was there for one of them. I got to commentate one. No, wait, 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 wait. Three. Oh. What well, was, wait, was, one of the, was there one in Detroit? There was one in Detroit. Did you do Detroit also? Because I hosted... Was that, was that Red Bull or was that someone else? I hosted one in Detroit. Oh, no, I didn't. I missed Detroit, but there was one in Detroit. Yeah, that's the only one in America I, I didn't host. I hosted Boston um, and Tampa. I, don't, I think I actually did. I think I did London, Detroit, and Santorini. Although Santorini, I just... Me and Joe Hendo thought we'd join the qualifiers. I did see you there. Not, not, not to undermine it, like, for a bit of time. We did, we did want to get in as well. It was quite last minute. And then, yeah, we both made it. Even though we, we both did pretty much the exact same jumps. So, I think the judges just wanted us to make it in. A little, little legend check. Nah, that's so funny. I, I was there. I, I got to commentate the one in London, which, in my opinion, was still to this date the biggest art of motion that's ever been held in history. That crowd was insane. Uh, um, was it? Was, was that, that was it London Theater? Yeah, National Theater. Yeah, it, there was like what ten thousand people or something. It was it was it was crazy looking out into that crowd. I have no idea. I mean, I think maybe the crowd put me off. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I, think, I think it did a little bit. I mean, once I was, I I, I like getting to put a song and be part of it, and like, we went for a nice meal. Because it was very last minute. I wasn't supposed to compete. Someone hurt their ankle or their leg or something like that. And I um, was then invited. I think obviously like a bit of peer pressure. A lot of other people were like, you, come on, you've got to do it. Why would you not do it? I was like, oh, fine, okay. But I'm really bad. I'm, I'm, I'm not a performer. Maybe like, well, at least not to a massive crowd that I don't know. I think if I was performing to my close friends or my family or a girl I like, you know what I mean? Then I think I actually would be quite good. But performing to people I don't know or respect, it, it does nothing for me. If that makes any sense. Yeah, totally. I feel like there's some guys built for competition and there's some like you. I, I honestly never thought I'd ever see you in Art of Motion. I'm not going to lie. I'm not against it, though. Not at all. Um, I think, yeah, and I think especially, again, I think it's a, not an economically viable sport at all. So I think... Fair enough if you want to try and equate your sort of success with jobs and financial options and competitions not only create a bit of prize money or something, they also, well, annoyingly, because no one 
apparently who hires people in films for stunts within the realm of parkour. No one does proper research because they're all asking if you want a competition. But then if you look at if you look at the community, how many people that are actually at the top of their game and you would want to see like that you're aware of, mm-hmm. how many people would you actually choose to put in a parkour chase scene on a film that's one out of motion? Because I, 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 my top 10, none of them have been uh, like placed in at any of these competitions. Totally. Because you'd want to count them out. Well, I mean, to be fair, that's what Michael Bay did on Six Underground. He contacted Storer and he was like, yo, I've seen all these rooftop videos come in my film and bust out the same yeah, stuff. True, that's true. Yeah. And then he kicked Sasha off set apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then and then was like, Who filmed that? That's amazing. And I was like, Oh yeah, the guy you, you kicked off <laughs> either way. <laughs> He's a nutter, bro. I've worked on a, I've worked on Transformers with him before where literally he fired somebody over the walkie talkie and then asked a question and the person that answered it was the person he just fired and he's like, Okay, come back. <laughs> This guy sounds a bit ridiculous. Oh, he, he's he's super over the top, bro. He's notorious for being very, pretty wild. Very ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> oh. but, and he's been, he, I think he's been around for a horrendous amount of time. Because didn't he, like, did he direct my lethal weapon or something? No, his big break was the first Bad Boys. Ah, uh, okay. Which he did for very minimal amount of money. I think he did Bad Boys for like 20, 30 mil, which is very small for an action movie of its kind. You know, now he does Transformers, which are like $150 million movies, you know? Oh, wait, wait, wait. So, so Bad Boys, he didn't get 30 mil. No, he, he, that was the budget for the film that he directed. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but, but that, that film, film is never, super iconic. Have you seen Six Underground? I, don't know, I doubt he's going to watch this. It was pretty whack, right? Uh, I thought Six Underground was so over the top. Like in the first opening scene, I was like, how many cars are going to flip for no reason? Like they're just driving by and cars are just exploding. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. yeah what yeah, the hell yeah. is this about? Yeah. And then and I got really annoyed because the, the guy that the boys doubled, the blonde guy, his English accent was so bad. Super bad. <laughs> in fact, oh, okay, not as bad as, have you watched any of, any of the boys? No, I haven't. I haven't seen that. Oh my, so one of the actors in that, I think his name's Carl something or other but he plays like a london cockney <laughs> and it's it's so bad i laugh i watched a few episodes the other night i couldn't stop laughing every time he spoke kind of ruined the, the tv show for me yeah. well, i don't know how that ended up getting released it, it looks like a very expensive budget how did no one just go hold on a minute i'm sorry Carl. <laughs> can we cast someone else like you just don't sound english <laughs> I've always been I've always been blown away by that by by realizing thinking that like Americans do horrible UK accents but what blows my mind is when people from the UK who have super heavy accents when they sing they sing like they're American perfectly okay I mean also maybe there are actually a lot of Australian American actors that probably can do a good British accent it's just that he's not one of them <laughs> uh, uh, apparently loads of loads of people were very surprised that Idris Elba was from England. Totally. Because he did so well in The Wire. Yeah. Like if you, if you told someone that watched The Wire that didn't know who he was, that he was English, they'd be like, what? No, nah, they just don't believe that he could do like sort of that, like a thick, strong accent. That smashed it. Oh, 100. That's so funny. So yo, I- Ben got an American accent now. Sorry, this is, it, this is too no, so funny. It, it's, yeah, I mean, comparative to when I first met him, yes. He totally speaks like an American now. <laughs> I mean, he always wanted to, didn't he? He, he wanted to. Fair play. Because then, then I talk to people like Ryan Doyle, and I'm like, oh, Rad still has his thick Liverpool accent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which isn't a, isn't a good one. <laughs> no. It can be. It can be, to be fair. But maybe not Ryan's or Danny's. Then it's quite interesting. <laughs> Danny's got a thick accent still sometimes. Yeah, sometimes Danny Danny's accent comes through pretty hard. Can you see him? Well, I guess he's, in, he's married in Switzerland now. Yeah, you know what? I asked him to be on the Jamcast, and he didn't say no, but he told me he refuses to do it online. He's like, I want to sit down with you in person. I'm like, all right, fair enough. You didn't say no, so I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair enough. I mean, maybe one day you'll find yourself in Switzerland. I hope so. Or he, be, I imagine because him and Will are still quite good friends, it's, right? Exactly. Yeah, I think he'll be in America sometime soon once the world's back to normal. Yeah, I don't know when that's going to be. Hopefully, after the election here in America. <laughs> no. There's a lot of conspiracies going on. America, is, is America just very normal? 
No, bro. We're shut down. My gym has been closed for six months. We're not allowed to eat inside a restaurant still. Schools are closed down. Kids can't go to school. Yeah, it's it's insane. A lot of I thought America, maybe it's certain states. I thought they were just sort of giving up and just living their own lives. There's certain states that are operating a little bit more functioning than others. But like here in L.A., bro, Jam has been shut down since March 15th. Wow. Okay. Fair, fair enough. So actually, because I've I've been eating in restaurants, I've been, been drinking in bars. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes. There's a lot of people that are always small groups. Um, but yeah, that sounds like we're more chilling. There's a lot of conspiracy theories going on in America. Some people think that it's obviously like it's a real thing. Like I know some guys that have gotten super sick and and gone into the hospital for a week, you know. But there's there's a lot of a lot of weird conspiracies out here that some people think they're trying to tank the economy on purpose just so people will vote out Donald Trump, you know, or or they'll think like they're going to let the economy fail simply so they could say like, look, he didn't do a good job of handling this pandemic. Let's vote him out. You know, are these, are these, are these Americans just thinking that the rest of the world doesn't exist? That's so- what I'm saying. I'm like, dude, I have friends that have around the world that have gotten sick. You know, it's, it's a real virus, obviously. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we were making friends. We were sort of sat, sat on the street watching the world go by outside this pub. And uh, we made friends with a few people just sort of in the area. And one of them started going on about 5G. <laughs> yeah. That's another one. Yeah. Mm. No, we're actually really polite to him. We didn't, there was no point in being like, no, you, you, you're full of nonsense. Because the problem is a lot of people like that is they think they're so open-minded that the whole rest of the, rest of the world is corrupt and against them. But once you state your point that you sort of disagree, they just think they like categorize you off totally. as one of these corrupted people. So they're, they're not actually really that willing to have a chat with you about it on a rational level which is kind of upsetting and to be fair like we may think someone who believes in 5g conspiracies is crazy but then there's people who look at what you do on top of rooftops and they think you're mentally crazy you know so it's all perspective yeah but i am in the context <laughs> of doing these pumps we are i think not not in a massively negative way but because they a lot of people like i don't know they don't consider walking down steep steps a little bit intimidating mm-hmm. because they've never done it but the 5G thing is different because it's, it's not the fact that I arrogantly know that I'm right. It's more the, it's more the negative assumption they are making because for this whole 5G conspiracy or for like the Illuminati, things like that, like I'm sure there are, there are obviously like links between massive corporations and people are trying to keep their money and not give you any. Oh. But they're not all linked across the world telling you the earth is flat, telling you the earth is round, for example. This is ridiculous. If so, for, like the whole hypothetical scenario that the Earth is steadily round, even though it's flat, so we all pay for like airline fares and shit. It's like, oh, so you reckon every single pilot is in on this? <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> That's a good one. And then, and then, and then so, so the 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 five G thing. That means that every single doctor, or even like nurse that works in a hospital, must be in on it. So like. How can you have that negative view on the world? It's ridiculous. It's pretty funny. I don't know. Anyway, let's no more no more perfect talk. <laughs> and yo, so with that being said, one of the things I want to ask you is like we've talked about it, how you're amazed with what the new gen's doing at this point in time, but is there anyone that you watch still at this day and age? Or do you watch old videos or like who inspires you at this point? So this is really sad. And I don't. I, I. I hope people appreciate honesty. But the actual answer is pretty much no one. That's a common answer we've gotten on the show, actually. E- except in person, and that's not. That's not because I don't enjoy watching. I watch Dora, and I actually do think. I think a lot of the stuff Ben and Toby do is absolutely wicked, mm-hmm. and Josh as well, more creatively. Um, and when I train with people, I'm always inspired by different things they do. I just mean that I'm, I'm lazy and I can't really be bothered oh, okay. to put much of my effort and time into watching hardcore videos anymore. I, I see the clip on Instagram, obviously, and like my friends, people like Harvey, this guy from Bristol, I watch his stuff, another guy, Callum. So it's more, it's more in a social relationship that I'd be watching people's videos, less sort of scrolling YouTube or scrolling um, Instagram. And yeah, it's not to discredit anyone, I, I just, I don't know. Like, for example, when I was 19, 18, any, any age under, even maybe up to 21, if I sat at a cafe 
and there was a roof and some walls nearby, I'd always be looking and thinking of what challenges I could do. But I haven't done that for years. I still enjoy doing it, but I don't really enjoy watching it that much, is the honest truth. I'd rather watch some tricking or some skateboarding. Ah, okay. Because I'm, I'm less aware of what they're doing, so I find it a bit more exciting, if that makes sense. Totally. Snowboarding, maybe. But really, I actually, if I'm watching something, it would be like some drama series or, or a film. That's dope. That makes sense. And comparative to when you started back in 2005 and to where the community is at right now, what do you think, uh, where do you think the sport's going next? Like, do you think it's going to get into the Olympics? Do you think we're just going to, you know, it's going to become just like continue to be an online sport, you know, that prolongs through YouTube and, and content creation? I think it would be nicer if it stayed very urban. But then there is the argument that because there's nothing you can really sell apart from clothing from different brands and teams, um, that makes it therefore hard to make money from parkour. But I think there's nothing wrong with that. I haven't researched it, but how many rock climbers do you think are making a living from rock climbing? I reckon probably not that many. True. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. Why can't you get a reasonable job and keep parkour as a hobby? I know many people that do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think I necessarily like dream of there being a day where people can make money from it. If that makes any sense. Uh, I don't know. The Olympics, I think, is would it would, would it be like how how would they do it? Would it be more athletics? Like who can who can cat pass or Kong the furthest into like some sandbox? You know or would it be like a Red Bull Art Motion type thing in the Olympics? Because you can't have a Red Bull Art Motion like thing in my opinion within the olympics because it's far too vague and far too open to interpretation who I gets points for what reason i think and i'm not involved in these discussions so like i'm just talking out of my ass right now i have friends of mine that are like part of the committees working on this stuff but i think they could potentially do speed courses because that's something that's just timed and that's just fastest person a to b you know and that's basically like yeah okay. and so that, that i'm i'm playing devil's advocate now what about the argument that based on how they set up the obstacles, could it favor shorter people, taller people? Just, just you know what I mean? I'd, totally. It's very tough. It's very tough. Yeah, but at least then it's quantitative though, you know? And like, you could still like have an obstacle where it's like, it may be faster for someone to side flip it as opposed to someone, you know, vaulting it or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Also, I don't know why. I feel really like, I always feel miserable saying it, but. The idea of parkour being at the Olympics just doesn't excite me at all. Does that mean? Yeah, I was curious. I was curious what your thoughts on it were. Because, you know... No, 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 fair enough. Not that I'm against it. I just... I, yeah, I, the way I see parkour is, like, fun problem solving and then sharing the challenge with friends, basically. That's what I think we do worldwide. And it may, it's grown quite a nice community. Um, and that's why we watch and share videos. And that's how you can also see that the sport has evolved in different ways because every time someone does something new, a little bit creative, then that, that move then becomes instilled in what people look for when they're practicing, things like this. Um, but I kind of like it being just like an online shared art form, if that makes any sense. Yeah, totally. You know what Fair I enough, set up competitions, events, and give some money to these athletes, get them sponsored, get them at least like some free fuel, as some people have. Um, but I don't know, I'd rather watch like some insane version of Ninja Warrior that's purely parkour based than the Olympics. Okay. Maybe it'll become something like that, you know? Yeah. Huh? I said maybe it'll become something like that, like an ultimate obstacle course where you just time someone, you know? Yeah, like imagine Ninja Warrior, but not these weird intricate climbs, like massive bollard strides mm -hmm. and then like, I don't know, just loads of more parkour based stuff. Everything big. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the annoying thing is, the argument that producers, I imagine, have is that the average person watching can't relate to it as well. I don't know. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. But yeah, I do think that it would have to be something quantitative, like a speed course or something. But you know what's one thing that's going to be really interesting is they're trying to get breakdancing into the Olympics. And I think that's going to be one of the first sports where opinion is going to be a part of it. Because like you can't do a speed course with break dancing. And so I think a lot of trickers and parkour people are waiting to see how that works and how they judge that. And then it'll kind of lay some groundwork, you know? Interesting. 
How, yeah, so would it be a country would have a team and they'd battle another country? Or it could just be individuals representing a country. You know, it could be solo battles. Oh, and then they have some kind of score system to yeah. see who wins. Or would it, would it be, I guess, because it would it be, then it would be an individual that wins, not yeah. the country. Yeah, yeah, it'd be like any yeah. event. Decide whether they make it a team sport or like more of an individual as part of a team. Because, for example, with gymnastics, you can have two people from America get the gold. No, get medals. Yeah, make the podium, yeah. You could, yeah, yeah, you could have gold and silver American. And then, I don't know why I'm giving Americans so much credit, but it's a hypothetical scenario. And then, like, France could get bronze. Uh, Whereas maybe the breakdancing thing, I think it would be cooler as groups. But then you've got a sort of regiment, five to a team. I don't know. It'll be interesting. Yeah, probably win. There's, there's some smarter people in charge making these decisions than you and I. <laughs> Oh, I don't know about smarter, but more, more versed with a uh, sort of competitive scenario, maybe. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like parkour just being something that kids do in the street. Okay. I don't think it needs to be established. That makes any sense? Yeah. But also that, that's just because of the age and how long I've been doing it and when I was around. But I appreciate not doing it in gyms. Yeah. let's say um not building obstacles at events because then the challenges are kind of made there for you whereas i like the idea of finding the challenge on some sort of urban environment so again that's just me being biased there's no there's no actual positive or negative to go either way here okay. and so what advice would you have for a young kid that wants to get into this sport that you love so much and have been around forever? What advice would you give to them to like start off and, and any tips or tricks that you have for them to like continue to progress and overcome fears and break their own boundaries? Uh, I think focus on what they enjoy and what they're good at whilst also looking after their body. That makes sense. Like, yeah, being soft, um, having good posture, things like that. And then, yeah, just develop your own style and character, I reckon, is the, the ideal. Go on and find challenges that you're excited about. Um, and maybe travel more. I didn't really travel a lot. I mean, traveling's great because you get a lot of different perspectives on finding challenges and new movements and things like that. Totally. Um, I don't know, yeah. Oh, yeah. That could be it. All right. And this is a question I always ask all of our homies before we get out of here, just to kind of gain some perspective on where their mind's at. And also so we can like look back on this interview and, you know, see where, what, what has happened. But uh, where do you see yourself personally five years from now? And then where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Wow. Um, five years, I see myself working a lot harder on a computer. Not academically, but um, working for some company. Okay. Potentially, this is why I don't actually know exactly what I want to do in my career. Maybe work as like a financial advisor. I looked into being an actuary, but that's very, very hard. <laughs> I've very complex mathematics. Um, but I could possibly learn to code and then do stuff with that. Okay. look at financial markets and give advice to big corporations potentially I'm not too sure 10 years maybe an accountant and then fingers crossed well never know me and two Australians are actually setting up a clothing company oh, which is not a free running team selling clothes it is wholeheartedly a clothing company okay. uh, focused on designing clothes that represent our culture and are well made um, well sourced, obviously not slave labour, and um, all the focus is on the design and the quality of the clothing, as opposed to focusing on being a team, travelling and filming loads of content, and then on the side, having clothes as well. Just what I mean. Yeah. So obviously, it's our interpretation of what we find stylish, what we find nice designs. Um, it's in the very, very early stages. Hopefully, in ten years. That will be doing relatively well. And then maybe if I can do like an ACA or ACCA, I'm not sure which one, like an accounting qualification after my economics degree, 
I reckon I know enough small businesses that I could just manage their accounts and make enough money to live quite decently, I think. So we shall see. But yeah, five years, ten years, probably a lot less jumping around to be perfectly honest with you. I'll still be running, playing tennis. Um, ideally basketball, but annoyingly I've learned as much as basketball is brilliant, it's so bad for your knees. <laughs> it, it is, dog. Trust me. me. <laughs> but let, me let me correct myself. It's so bad for my knees. <laughs> it's bad. Um, <clears throat> I think I, maybe, maybe as I start training less, I will actually watch more. Does that make sense? Because I, yeah. I, I see people doing parkour in Bristol all the time. Um, so maybe if I wasn't training, I'd watch more parkour videos. I think I'll always watch the story videos because it's kind of like it's become a, a nice habit on a Monday or a Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a Wednesday. Sometimes I feel like like a week's gone by like that because I'm like, what? The, well, there's a new one already. What? Yeah. What, 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 what have I been doing for a week? Well, that's holidays for you. Um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe I'll like I don't, I don't know the word. My worst idea is. I know a few people, and I don't want to insult them on here, but I'm about to. Um, people that have gotten into just weightlifting, not weightlifting to supplement other training, just weightlifting. Mm-hmm. So that is wah, wah, wah. pretty boring. Pretty boring. And like, are the other games? I guess it's, it's lifting more weight. It's not. It's not necessarily vain. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. yeah. Sure, often is, is the progression, but it's so boring progression. I lifted that last week, and now I can lift this. <laughs> <laughs> and and again, and again, and in different forms, yeah, fair play. Um, but yeah, so that is one, that's one thing I'll never do, is lift weights for the sake of lifting weights. Maybe I'll do some Bulgarian split squats. Well, split squats so that I can jump further. And higher. So I still can't dunk. I know Jenkins can dunk. Mm. I mean, your garden, I can get, get nine and a half. Never got ten, man. <laughs> <laughs> get that conditioning on. We'll got yeah, yeah, yeah. Lose some weight. Get that conditioning on. Also, it's really. Hard. I think I actually can <clears throat> jump high enough. It's jumping high enough with the ball that I can't do. It's hard because if you can't palm it, you got to get at least to here with your cupping. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, exactly. And you've got to run fast and then jump as high as you can whilst bringing this ball up, but only bringing it up enough that you can get your hand over it. And not very easy. Not easy. It's, it's easier to catch an ollie oop or a tip dunk the first time. Yeah, Pretty sure. I think I maybe have done that once or twice, but again, I think this rim was a couple of inches off 10 feet. Damn it. Because I really like the movie White Men Can't Jump. Classic. I need to dunk. I've even got a pair of Jordans now, just just for the occasion. Yeah, Yo, I'll be, I'll, you know Ben and I will be waiting for the day you send us a video of you dunking. It's coming, it's coming. And then we'll have to play. I need to make it out to LA and we can play and get a Tempest. Yes, bro. Because I know, I know for certain if I'm there, Ben will come out and train. Hundred percent. If you're out here. I think even last time we did, but it was so long. 2015. It was the last time I was in LA. We went to Tempest. I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think there was no one else there. So I think it was pretty empty. It was pretty. Yeah, it was pretty minimal. I remember. Yeah, you guys did that one mission where you like did the lache over the bar to regrab. Oh, I think I never got it. Ben got it. Ooh, okay. I never got it. I maybe like tapped it and then got over. Yeah, so they're quite low bars as well, but they're thin. I love it. If I can get my hand around it, giants all day, no trouble. I love a giant. Big fan. Hell yeah. Well, yo, dude, more than anything, I appreciate you taking the time out to come and sit here and you know, it's crazy how much time's flown by. I've known you for like over a decade at this point, and hopefully I'll be able to keep following the journey for the next decade from here on out, you know? I will, I will too. Yeah, exactly. Stay in touch. And I actually will. Baby John's getting married, so I will be in America whenever that wedding can happen. Right. And obviously I'll plan it. I'll come to I'll Colorado, come see you guys, maybe go to New York. Mm. Come to LA for sure. <laughs> and it's like two weeks hopefully as well I'll just stay with Ben yeah. stay with Ryan stay with you if you've got space I'll like bounce around so that I don't annoy anyone but yeah. we'll do two weeks we'll swim I might even, maybe I'll even smoke a bit of uh, just a little bit <laughs> fully legal in, 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 in Cali <laughs> no I know but I, just, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't really smoked it since before I was last there long time wow That's crazy. long maybe like eight years 
seven, eight years. Anyway, I might get excited. Cool. Oh, yeah, well, thank you very much for having me, Chad. It's been a yeah. pleasure. Yo, before we get out of here, bro, can you just let the people know where they can follow you and stay up to date with your journey and whatever you keep doing over the next few years? Um, I don't do a lot, to be perfectly honest with you, but my Instagram, at underscore KD, is where you find me. My YouTube channel might have some content soon, but because I've, I've, I've got a camera, I'm going to film some long, not feature length, you can't say that, but longer videos. <laughs> Do a song like more like the old school, but they might end up going on different channels, not mine. Because obviously, I'm not that much following. Might be on Storm, might be on Ampersound, I'm not too sure. Um, so, for those guys, I guess you might already be doing that. Uh, but yeah, at underscore through the other Instagram. Follow me so that I can get paid to just film myself drinking <laughs> fuel with some nonsense. Hell yeah, dog. I appreciate, I appreciate it, bro. It, bro. I uh, appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Um, and hopefully I'll see you. Not soon, but we got a lot. we got a lot of life to live yet, so at some point in the near future. 100, brother. 100. Love you, man. Keep it good. You Stay too. Stay in touch with Ben. Keep him training. 100, bro. Hey, yo, guys. As always, please be sure to hit that like button, comment, subscribe for brand new episodes each and every week. Join us every Monday for Jam Breakdowns and every Friday for brand new Jamcast, interviewing influential members of the movement community like Mr. Philly D himself. So with that being said, guys, I got to give one more very special shout-out to our guest this week, Mr. Phil Doyle. Thanks for coming through, homie. You are most welcome. It's been a pleasure. Have a good... What time is it? Are you, are you about to start your day? No, it's like 3 p.m. Uh, okay, we can... Halfway I'm going to bed. <laughs> as you should, brother. And as always, guys, coming at you, coming through, I'm your host, Travis Wong. Thanks for joining us here on another Jamcast. Till next time, we'll see you all soon. Peace.